Welcome to Direct Connect. I'm Amanda Balionis in for John Swantech this week, and this is the place where you get to connect directly with some of your favorite PGA Tour players. Joining us this week is Johnson Wagner, three-time PGA Tour champion, his third win coming in the first full field event of this season, the Sony Open in Hawaii. Johnson, thank you so much for joining us as uh, you get ready to kick off the Honda Classic. There's been so much buzz leading up to this event with how strong this field is. How excited are you to kind of kick off the Florida Swing? Uh, I'm very excited. I, I used to live down in this area after college, and uh, I've got a lot of friends down here. It's uh, what a great golf course. The Florida Swing is one of the best times of the year. The weather's always good, so I'm very happy to be in Florida. Well, you also have a ton of fans out there through Twitter, Facebook, and the Tour Report on PGATour.com. We had a ton of questions, so uh, let's let's dive right in. The first one coming right. from the Tour Report from Colby Nelson. You may remember me as one of the mustache guys from the Humana <laughs> Challenge. Sadly, my mustache fell off shortly after I left the course that Sunday, but I just wanted to say that we are all cheering for you up here in Canada. So this was kind of the perfect segue for us because <laughs> We got to ask you, tell us a little about why you started to grow the mustache, when it's going to be here until, and if your wife Katie is, has kind of grown to love it, maybe? <laughs> she's definitely not grown to love it. I think she's <laughs> tolerating it now, but uh, Colby, was, uh, Colby was great. There was five of them from Calgary out there at the Humana and uh, showed up on the first tee on Sunday cheering for me, and it, it made my day, made my week, and fortunately played well. And, the mustache kind of started over Thanksgiving, grew a uh, grew a beard, I guess you could call it, for a week, and got home, decided it was too much growth to waste. I'd never grown facial hair, so I decided to cut it into a mustache, and uh, <laughs> my wife hated it so much, I just had to, I had to keep it around, and, you know, I kind of made a deal that I'd cut it if I didn't get into the Masters, and when I got into the Masters so early, I, you know, figured it was going to stay, and it's probably going to stay for a while. It might be 10, 20 years. 10, 20 years. That would be a serious stash, I think, if you yes. grow that thing for 10 to 20 years. So <laughs> our, our next question is uh, from Facebook. It's from Michael. Do you approach the season any differently now that you have secured a spot to the majors and appear to be locked into the FedEx Cup playoffs pretty deeply? You have never made it to the Tour Championship. You currently sit second in uh, FedEx Cup standing. So this, this is kind of a, a, different, a different feeling for you in the beginning of a season. It is. I'm, I'm very excited. I, I had lofty goals starting the year. Wanted to make the Tour Championship. Wanted to play in all the majors. And, you know, my main goal for the rest of this year is going to be to try to qualify for the Ryder Cup team. I just don't think there could be any greater honor for me than to represent my country, especially in a home Ryder Cup year. All right. And then from Twitter, Michael Shingleton asks, what do you do when your mind gravitates to the past and or the future during the round? How do you stay focused? It's, that's one of the toughest things about playing professional golf, especially on Sundays. The mind can wander incredibly. And uh, the way I've always dealt with it is, you know, you just kind of have to stop what you're doing, stop what you're thinking, start thinking about something else, take deep breaths, and go to a, go to a familiar place in your mind that you know you can focus on that thing as opposed to what you're not supposed to be thinking about. Yeah, what, I mean, what were you focusing on Sunday at the Sony Open when it, you went your last 12 holes bogey free? That obviously showed that you, you were definitely in the zone. <laughs> I was probably focusing on not getting sick out there because I was so nervous. <laughs> but uh, no, just focusing on breathing and, you know, it's a cliche, but just focusing on the next shot that you had to hit. And, you know, days when you can, when you can do it that way, they generally turn into wins. So it was, uh, it was nice to be as concentrated as I was. All right, and our next one is from the Tour Report. Kevin Childs asks, what do you have to say about your time at O'Neill High School in Highland Falls? Was golf or hockey your favorite sport? For those out there that don't know, you actually captained your hockey team your junior and senior years of high school. I, I, I did. Uh, I, I loved playing hockey. It was, uh, you know, being in New York, our golf season wasn't very long. So the wintertime, I definitely had to, had to choose a sport to play, and it was either hockey or basketball. And, I'd kind of grown up playing hockey in Nashville and then moved up there in high school and we had to practice at 4.30 in the morning before oh. school two days a week but uh, you know I miss I miss getting on the ice and hockey is definitely you know a great great sport to play. During your off time have you have you gotten out on the ice recently? 
No, I haven't been on ice skates since my uh, since my last game, my senior year. I've been on rollerblades, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> That's probably for the best. We would not want any uh, off the course injuries like that. All right, our next question from the tour report is from Martin, and he says, "Was January just a hot month for you, or is it the start of the real deal? I drafted you on my fantasy team, and this is important stuff. The real deal, or wave the January player of the month. You had three top ten finishes. He still isn't convinced. So make your argument." <laughs> Uh, I'm 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 here to stay. Uh, you know I've worked hard. I, this is this is the beginning of my ascent to the top 50, 20, however high I can get in the world. I'm uh, I'm here to stay this year. You kind of have this newfound confidence that you're normally a pretty shy person, but you know you lost a lot of weight coming into the season. You grew this mustache. You were telling people you were going to come out and win here early. Where is this kind of newfound confidence coming at this point in your in your career? Uh, you know, I, I think working out has given me a lot more energy. Growing the mustache has given me a thicker skin. It's kind of allowed me to not care so much about what people think. And I've got two kids. I'm married. I'm very comfortable in my life. And, you know, it's all coming together. And uh, our final question for you from Steve Hawk on the Tour Report. Was there less pressure when you were looking to kind of find your place on tour? Or is there more pressure now, being that you're one of the game's rising stars? More pressure before you know it's 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 tough keeping your card out here it's you know 156 guys wanting to wanting to beat you every week and first couple of years are tough uh, not many guys have tremendous success early I was fortunate to win early which gave me a little bit of comfort zone for my first four or five years and you know I think it's going to continue to be tough for me throughout my career it, guys like Ricky Fowler or Jordan Spieth you know Patrick Cantlay coming up there's always going to be young talent coming in and trying to push people out, but it was definitely tough for the first couple of years. All right. Well, good luck this week. I know you have a lot of people out there cheering for you. We're looking forward to seeing you. So good luck at the Honda Classic. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for having me on.